Dr. Christopher West here, the Theology of the Body Guy. Welcome to episode two of our new series, The Faith from A to Z, with the help of John Paul II's T-O-B. Hey, if you're new to this channel, our goal here is to explore how our earthly bodies reveal heavenly mysteries. If you want to dive deeply into questions about what it means to be human and why we are male and female in the image and likeness of God and how that reveals the deepest mysteries of the universe, you are going to want to subscribe to this channel. And we would love it if you'd click the bell, leave comments, share these videos, because it forces YouTube to share the gospel with the world. Help us out in doing that. That'd be awesome. Okay, let's jump right in here. Episode two in our guided reading of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Faith from A to Z with the help of T-O-B, a guided reading of the C-C-C. Here we go. We are on paragraph three of the prologue of the Catechism. Those who with God's help have welcomed Christ's call and freely responded to it are urged on by love of Christ to proclaim the good news everywhere in the world. Last time in episode one, we talked about what that good news is. That good news, in a nutshell, is that God wants to marry us. That's our eternal destiny. Jesus said, and this is how the catechism began, this is eternal life, that you would know God. Check out episode one where we unpacked what that means. That biblical knowledge is a spousal reality. Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived. That's the main thread in the biblical story. God wants to marry us and our bodies as male and female tell that story. What story? That we are destined for bliss to participate in the everlasting life of God. That's what the good news of the gospel is we are created for bliss. We are urged on when we encounter this love, when it's not just a theory floating out there, but it sinks into our hearts. We are urged on by that love to proclaim this everywhere in the world. We want everybody to know it. This treasure received from the apostles has been faithfully guarded by their successors. Today, the Pope and the bishops in union with him are the successors of the apostles, and they are charged, and we, in communion with them, are charged to bring this good news to those who don't know it. All Christ's faithful are called to hand this good news on, check out this expression, from generation to generation. Very interesting. From generation to generation. How does human history happen? Human history happens <laughs> because Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived, right? And that generation builds the next generation, builds the next generation, builds the next generation. Human history is literally determined by who is having sex with whom, right? Do I exaggerate? Do I, do I inflate the truth here? Uh, no, this is bedrock foundational stuff. This is biology 101, but it's also theology 101 because our bodies are not only biological, they're theological. As we will be unfolding throughout this journey through the faith from A to Z, with the help of John Paul II's T.O.B., we're going to discover what it means that grace perfects nature. And the most natural reality in human life is that sex leads to babies. Generation to generation. The gospel will build on that truth. Salvation history will build on natural history, human generations. We're going to unpack this. We're going to unfold this as we keep going. The faith gets passed on from generation to generation by professing the faith, by living it in fraternal sharing, sharing among brothers and sisters, and by celebrating it in the liturgy and prayer liturgy. We're going to discover that the church's liturgy is a spousal reality. What happens in the liturgy? It's sad, it's tragic that we don't hear this growing up, but the mass, which is the pinnacle of Christian liturgy, 
The Mass is the consummation of the marriage between Christ and the Church. As John Paul II tells us, the Eucharist is the sacrament of the bridegroom and of the bride. That's what liturgy is. Liturgy is also the pinnacle of Christian prayer. What is prayer? Pope Benedict XVI tells us that the Christian who prays is seeking nuptial union with the Lord. What? Yes, this is the image that Scripture uses. This is the image that the Catechism uses. This is the image that the saints throughout the centuries have used again and again and again to help us understand the depths of prayer, to help us understand the heights of liturgy, to help us understand the mystery of Christianity itself. The saints, the mystics, the scriptures, the catechism, the tradition of the church has returned again and again and again to that spousal imagery. Christ is the bridegroom, the church is the bride. God wants to marry us and he stamped it, that beautiful plan, right in our bodies. Let's keep going here. Heading number two of the prologue of the catechism is called Handing on the Faith, colon, catechesis. Now let me say a word about catechesis right at the start here. It comes from the Greek word katechine, which means to echo or resound. The problem with my catechesis growing up was that it was presented in a dry, boring, kind of doctrinaire way. And when that happens, it doesn't echo in the heart. It feels like some duty put on us from the outside. Authentic catechesis, John Paul II says, means we are unfolding in all of its beauty and splendor the divine plan. The mystery, he says, quoting from Scripture, the mystery that has been hidden in God for eternity must be made visible, must be made tangible, must be communicated in catechesis. How do we do it? Always and only by linking catechesis with the body. This is how it resounds and echoes in our hearts. The mystery hidden from eternity in God. This is a direct quote out of John Paul II's Theology of the Body. The body, and only the body, he says, is capable of communicating to us the mystery that has been hidden from eternity in God. That's the goal of catechesis, to share with us this mystery. What is it? God is an eternal exchange of love, and we are destined to share in that bliss and ecstasy. Catechesis, rightly understood, is the proclamation and invitation of all human beings into that ecstasy. Keep that in mind as we look at this. Paragraph number four of the Catechism says, Quite early on, the name catechesis was given to the totality of the church's efforts to make disciples, to help men believe that Jesus is the Son of God, so that believing they might have life in His name, and to educate and instruct them in this life, thus building up the body of Christ. Two key words I want to talk about here. Life and body, right? Christianity is an invitation to eternal life. And in the last video, we learned that that life is to know God. Supernatural life is what we're called to. What we experience here on planet Earth in our normal humanity is natural life. But here's a very important principle of the faith. Supernatural life does not cancel out natural life. Supernatural life perfects natural life. Or we could say it this way. Grace perfects nature. The very foundation, Jesus says, for entering into the supernatural life is natural life. He says to Nicodemus, you cannot enter the supernatural realm, the, the realm of the kingdom, the realm of eternal life, unless you are born again, regenerated of water in the Spirit. Nicodemus is confused. How, how, how can I enter my mother's womb a second time? Here, Nicodemus is confusing the supernatural and the natural. And yet, we can't enter the supernatural 
unless we understand the natural. Jesus says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, if you don't understand the natural reality of birth and generation, how are you going to understand the supernatural reality? Right? We are called to supernatural life. The foundation for understanding that is natural life. The generations, as we've been talking about, how does life go from generation to generation? Through the union of the two in one flesh. That's where life comes from. God has deigned that life come from the union of man and woman, the union of Adam and Eve, to use the biblical terms for man and woman in the beginning, right? What is Christianity? Supernatural life comes from the union of the new Adam, Jesus Christ, and the new Eve, the church, the bride. This is our faith. Christ and the church, new Adam, new Eve, man and woman, first Adam, first Eve. Natural life comes through the first Adam and Eve. Supernatural life comes from the new Adam and Eve. And so all of this we see is rooted in the body of Christ. You came into the world when your parents, the two, became one body. And supernaturally, through baptism, we have all become one body in Christ. Do you see how life and the body, naturally and supernaturally, come together? Theology of the body therefore becomes the John Pauline lens, as Dr. Waldstein says, for reading the catechism. So let's keep going. Paragraph number five. Catechesis is an education in the faith of children, of young people, and adults, which includes especially the teaching of Christian doctrine imparted, generally speaking, in an organic and systematic way with a view to initiating the hearers into the fullness of Christian life. What is the fullness of Christian life? life. St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 3 that we are all destined to be filled with all the fullness of God. Did you hear that? The God, the ultimate source of everything, the majestic one, the ultimate one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one, the ultimate mystery that is God that we can only dumbfoundedly drop our jaws in awe of, that God wants to dwell in us. That God wants us to be filled with all of his fullness and he wants us to be filled bodily with all his fullness. We are to become other Christs. What do I mean? Scripture says that the whole fullness of the divine life, what is that? The ecstasy, the bliss of the eternal, life-giving, loving God. Again, all we can do is dumbfoundedly be in awe of his joy, of his bliss, of his ecstasy, of his love, of his very being. That God dwells in Christ in all his fullness bodily. And we are to become other Christs in which the fullness of God dwells in us bodily. And here, Mary becomes the icon of what it means to be human. Pregnant Mary. Remember, this is always rooted in our bodies. Our bodies reveal the mystery. Pregnant Mary. If Jesus really is the fullness of God, then pregnant Mary is a human person like you and me. Remember, Christ is a divine person. He takes on a human nature, but he remains a divine person. Mary, pregnant Mary, is a human person who has all the fullness of God dwelling in her. And so pregnancy itself, John Paul II tells us, pregnancy itself is a sign of our destiny. 
that we would be filled with the life of Christ. Every child conceived under the beating heart of a woman, John Paul II says, is a reminder to us of pregnant Mary, of the fulfillment of pregnancy itself, which is to give flesh to the second person of the Trinity. This is our faith. You and I are destined to participate bodily in the eternal ecstasy of the divine life. This is what catechesis is supposed to be, inviting us to participate precisely in that divine life. This is what faith in its fullness is. This is what the Christian life in its fullness is. What? John Paul II tells us, faith is the openness of the human heart to this gift of God that we are to be filled bodily with all the fullness of the divine life. Theology of the body really and truly helps us to understand our faith from A to Z. This series, Our Faith from A to Z, with the help of John Paul II's TOB, which is a guided reading of the CCC, will continue in our next episode. In the meantime, I pray that your eyes would be open to who you really are.